All right, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of YouTube. This is Pastor Dow. It's been quite some time since I've actually um, sat and went over a video with you. And since there was a lot of uh, brand new people that are new to my channel, uh, mostly people who are concerned with social, political, economic perspectives and religious point of views, especially religious point of views. Um, I have a, a few people, you know, brand new coming in since I've went over 100,000 subscribers. Um, they want to know my perspectives and stance on why do I have such an offense against the word Christian. And um, and this is what this video is about. It's, it's here to bring clarity, uh, to let you know that I really truly don't have an offense uh, against the word or the term uh, Christian and so I just thought I'd take this um, evening as an opportunity to try to explain myself uh, since many of you are brand new uh, coming in because many of you, you have heard the word you've heard me preach and teach you get a witness in your spirit and you say man this guy's telling the truth but I just don't understand what what is this problem with this word Christian so let me go ahead and explain myself um there are many things in this world um, that we have all been reared, and I'm going to use the word trained to believe. Um, be it um, the public food system, public school system, or um, uh, reared and raised by family, um, tradition, or, or whatever. We, we probably done done it all. I mean, I grew up in a family household where there was a Christmas tree uh, there every single year. When I got married, um, I just sent it. And I said, I ain't putting no Christmas tree up because I didn't see any reason for it. I didn't see no reason for putting a Christmas tree up at the time because it didn't make any sense to me. It just didn't make no sense to me. But um, I don't want to digress. I want to stay with the you know, true sense of this video on the word Christian. Let's go into it. Let's walk this thing up. Let me see. Now, if you are familiar with the Bible, any, any way, shape, fashion, form, you will be able to follow me as I try to explain this. And I want you to be able to test, check, and prove every single thing that I say, okay? Let's walk this thing up. Now, there was a man by the name of Abram. Uh, he came from the land of the called the Ur of the Chaldeans. Uh, these was polytheistic people, meaning that they believed in more than one God. Uh, for mo most of you people that are usually scripturally astute, they believed in more than one mighty one, or more than one L, one L. Uh, this man, Abram, just seemed, he just couldn't get it. He didn't understand it. He didn't make no sense. And so he sought out on a pilgrimage or a journey, and then the Most High, Yahweh, revealed himself to Abram. And um, he made a covenant with Abram. And that covenant involved um, Abram circumcising himself. Um, and he um, went on to say that in thee shall all nations of the earth be blessed. Anyway, from that line, mind you, at this time, they were all Hebrews. All right. Listen to me very closely. Abraham was a Hebrew. He was not an Israelite. I understand and I comprehend very well that it's hard for people to track what I'm saying because as soon as I say something, their mind immediately goes to what their so-called theologians or teachers taught them um, because they know that you're not going to actually pick up this, this Bible right here and read it for yourself. And that's what I'm hoping to admonish um, you with tonight as I begin to speak on the subject. Well, anyway, Abraham had a son by the name of Isaac. And um, Isaac um, and, um, had a son by the name of Jacob. Jacob, his name was, it, it meant surplanter. But his name got changed to Israel as one that wrestles with Yah. All right. And, and mind you, I'm, I'm missing out on a great portion of history right here because I'm trying not to make this a long video. I'm trying to get to the point. 
Jacob had 12 sons coming from four different women. Um, Rachel, Leah, uh, Beulah, um, I forget the other one right now, it escapes me, but Zilpha, Zilpha, Zilpha. Thank you, because my wife and they helping me. So, you got, out of the 12 tribes of Israel, you got one progenitor, Jacob, who had four different women that produced 12 sons, and out of them come the 12 tribes of Israel. All right. One of these sons just happened to be Joseph or Yosef. And Yosef, what happened with Yosef was that he was just different than everybody else. He was just literally different than everybody else. He was different than everybody else. Uh, him and Benjamin was because these were sons um, while Jacob or Jacobo was um, old, old. Uh, he had two younger sons in his old age and he was very fond of them. Now, the brothers resented him, so nevertheless, pretty much what happened was is that Jacob ended up being sold um, into slavery. All right? We're not going to go over details that. We're just going to go along with the narrative of the story. Jacob ends up in Mizraim. Mizraim is what is commonly called today as Egypt. And Jacob ends up being so faithful to the Most High God, even and the temptation of Potiphar's wife, um, and many visions and dreams that have come to pass, that he was able to save the whole Hamite line of the Egyptians because of the visions that God was showing him, or God was showing him. He ended up becoming second in command to Pharaoh only. That's what Pharaoh promoted him to. And Pharaoh gave Jacob... Um, I mean, Joseph, excuse me, the name Zephaniah Paneath. Um, and when he had that name, he ended up marrying an Egyptian by the name of Aserah. All right. So they had a, a few sons. Um, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and skip on. Next thing you know, um, what happened was the Israelites was in slavery because the pharaohs, that knew the Israelites. I want you. I want you to listen to me very closely. I keep saying Israelites, Israelites, because Abraham was not a Christian, Isaac was not a Christian, and Jacob was not a Christian. Now Abraham was a Hebrew, Isaac was a Hebrew, Jacob was a Hebrew, but then he had his name changed to Israel. So Jacob was the first Hebrew. Israelite. All right. Nobody ever heard of a word or a title called Christian. Mind you, I'm staying concretely. I want you to follow along with me. Um, if you can't understand and comprehend what I'm saying up until this point, no matter how elementary I'm keeping this, um, you're going to have to definitely do your own due diligence and your own study of the Bible. Now, let's fast forward this thing. Moshe or Moses um, ended up being a deliverer because Israel found themselves in bondage because the pharaohs that have already passed on didn't know them and the reason why they ended up in bondage is because they were multiplying way too fast for the Egyptians uh, to the point that the Egyptians became fearful because they thought that the Israelites was going to take over so they put them into slavery the Israelites cried out to the Most High that's Yahweh, and you call him God. And they was waiting for the deliverer. Anyway, you know the story about Moses. They ain't even going over that. But anyway, Yahweh raised up Moses to deliver his people. Well, Moses sends the people out into, you know, after many miracles, signs, and wonders into the wilderness so that they may know Yah and to prepare a feast for him. Um, so we go on down the line. We find out that King David was a man created after Yah's own heart. Only one problem. King Saul, who came before him, um, was the first king in Israel because Israel had rejected 
the Most High God. They wanted to be like the other nations. That's that's our problem today, is that we're too busy wanting to be like the people that we're surrounded by. We want to do after their mannerisms and their customs. And the Most High God told Samuel, they're not rejecting you, but they're rejecting me. And so Samuel went ahead and anointed Saul as the first king. Saul was too busy being presumptuous, um, you know, relaxing uh, the law, statutes, and commandments. The next thing you know, David's up. And then David's, you know, a man after his own heart. And David ends up having a son by the name of Solomon uh, through Bathsheba. Um, and David at this time had probably between wives and concubines or women and concubines probably 18 of them um, but the most high God chose to actually bring the the line through Solomon uh, Solomon had the most high appeared to him twice and Solomon ended up turning his back even though he was the wisest man that ever lived up until Christ or Jesus Christ or Yahshua Hamashiach or Yeshus Masika um, decided to actually when he when you know in the fullness of time came upon the scene. We're skipping all the way over to what is commonly called in the English tongue, Yeshus or Yesus uh, Jesus. All right, the Messiah, the King of Israel. When you read Matthew fifteen twenty four, it says, "I've not been sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel." When you read Luke, um, the first chapter, uh, you said you'll see that he came to visit and redeem his people out of the hands of their enemies. Who was that? Israel. Um, the whole purpose of the Messiah to come in Matthew, the first chapter, read in verse twenty all the way to the end, was to save his people from their sins. Now, at this time, again, up until this point, no such thing as Christians. No such thing as any other philosophy, theology, idea, ideology, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, they were only known as Israel, the Israelites. Now, at this time, and, and of course, I have to digress a little bit. You know, when after uh, King Saul had decided that he was going to rebel against the Most High God, uh, the Most High God rent the kingdom of Israel into two, two sticks. Um, he cut off 10 nations or 10 tribes, excuse me, 10 tribes of Israel and left two unto the Yehudims or Judah that is commonly called today. When Christ was upon the scene, Judah was the ones that hadn't forsaken the covenant, the law, statutes, and commandments. Israel at this time has been scattered into every single nation on the face of planet Earth. Um, they, they were Ephraim, a cake not turned. They were scattered everywhere. That includes, at that time, Asia Minor, um, the East, uh, and all over the earth. All right? So when Yahshua, Jesus Christ, came up on the scene, when he said he came to his people, he said, I've been not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Not only did he come to redeem Judah, but he came to redeem Israel or the scattered sheep of Israel. You'll read that in the prophet Yeshayahu, what you commonly call Isaiah, um, if you want a good understanding of that. But we're here for a particular reason. Okay. So at this time, you got the Messiah, Jesus Christ, walking the face of the planet Earth. He's healing the sick, cleansing the lepers, raising the dead, casting out devils. And those are his true disciples. He gave them, he delegated them the power to do the very same thing. And um, and he told them um, to go out and make disciples. And they did that. Anyway, he's in pale. Anyway, after Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, he appeared unto them, being seen many days by many infallible proofs. Um, next thing you know, over in the book of Acts, the first chapter, um, he's speaking to them, preaching to them concerning the things of the kingdom of Yah. And then he's resurrected up into glory. But he told them, I want you to go to Jerusalem and I want you to tarry there and wait for the promise of the Father. And I might add, I'm going to throw this in there again. Nobody at this time has ever heard. So we got 
5,000, just about there, about 5,000 years of history, and nobody has ever heard of a term or a word called Christian or Christians. Follow me very closely. They were all still known as Israelites. So anyway, um, the book of Acts come, and next thing you know, these people start speaking in tongues. Um, he had seen 500 um, only 120 made it to the upper room. You have to read this in Acts chapter 1 and chapter 2 in order to be able to follow you. All right. So he, he goes on to there. Next thing you know, um, the people thought that the Israelites at that time was drunk with wine. But Peter stood up and said, or oh, Shimon Kefla stood up, stood up and said, you know, this is that which was spoken of the prophet Yoel. And you'll read that prophecy in Joel chapter 2 verse 28 and 29 and you just read to the end all right uh, he said this is that which was spoken about the prophet Joel and then all of them were so impacted by the experience that they asked Peter or Shimon Kefla what shall we do and then Peter said in Acts chapter 2 verse 38 he said I want you to repent and be immersed or be baptized every one of you in the name of Yahshua Hamashiach or in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins and then he said this something subsequent, subsequent to him. he says and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost as King James translated so they go on still to this point and, and even in this chapter he even says ye men of Israel notice no Christians no nothing all right so next thing you know, we get to Acts chapter 10 and Peter is meeting up with Cornelius, a man of an Italian band, one that feared Yah and worked righteousness and just loved Yah's people. That's all he did. He loved Yah's people. And Yah gave Peter a vision, which the Christians misinterpreted all the time because there's something foul. Now don't get upset with me because I said that. I said it for a reason because you know Isaiah 820 says to the law and to the testimony and if they don't speak according to this word right here it's because there's no light in them uh, the Psalms says in 119 that righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and our laws are truth and the Israelites already had laws where they knew that you could not let any unclean thing pass your mouth so Peter says, after he receives his vision of all these four-footed beasts, these manner of creeping things and foul things in the air, and he heard a voice from Shemaim, which is heaven, said, rise, kill and eat. And Shimon Kepler said, no, not so, master, because I've never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And then he said, the voice from heaven said, what Yah has cleansed, don't you call uncommon people assume today he's talking about the four-footed beast the wild beast the creeping beast the snakes the pigs the skunks the ox the ass and every damn thing else that's going on in work but that ain't what he's talking about what he's actually talking about is when you go to acts chapter 10 and we'll go over that real quick and i'll get my bible just like you have i'll get a king james version and what we'll do is we'll read it exactly verbatim for what it says. Now, I have to walk all this up for those of you that are still here that want comprehension or understanding. And he says this. He says that uh, Acts chapter 10, and we'll start at verse... Uh, 28 and he said unto them you know that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or to come under one of another nation and then he says this but Yah or God has showed me now I'm not going to do a, a particular word study here tonight on the word Jew or Yehudim because it just goes off into another area we're going to stay the course with this word Christian he says but Yah has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. So the vision 
was about humans. The vision was about people of another nation. And and Shimon Kefla, Peter, had just got finished being showed by the master, Yahshua Mashiach, that he should not call any man common unclean. Anyway, what make a long story short, they end up receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Well, anyway, at, up to this point, still, Gentiles were able to come into the covenant. Nobody at the time is still being called Christian. Never heard of it. Now, in the purest sense, the word Christian means a follower of Christ. I've been living 52 years on this earth, and I still have not yet met a true Christian. I have heard people profess in their mouth in theory that they are a Christian, but I have never in the 52 years of myself living on this earth have ever met a true first, second, or third century Christian. Because if you are a follower of Christ, that means you are a disciple. And if you are a disciple, that means you love him. And if you love him, according to John 14, 15, then you would keep his commandments. And I don't know one Christian on the face of the whole entire planet Earth that actually obeys Jesus and keeps his commandments. I'm being concretely. I don't mean to insult nobody's intelligence. I'm just being real. I'm telling you the truth and the truth straight way. So, by the time you get over here to Acts, uh, let's go uh, chapter 11. And then it says over here in verse uh, 26. And this is where the modern day, or let me say the Western Christians. Now, the trouble is this, and I, and I really truly, I'm going to sit up here just for a second. I'm going to pull this thing up here. I'm going to sit up here because I want y'all to really truly hear what I'm getting ready to say right here. I want you to slow down for a second and listen to what I'm getting ready to say, okay? Up until this point, everybody uh, Hebrews, they're Israelites. Um, and now we enter into what we see in the Bible for the first time mentioned after 5,000 years of history, the word Christian. And what we have is that they're trying to tell us in the translation. And the disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. Now think about that for a second. Somebody asserted and somebody called of these people who were allegedly followers of Christ, Christians. Watch this. The problem of today is this. Is whenever we think about the word Christian, what was meant in the first century, the second century, and the third century as a title or a name of the people who followed Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, has taken on a total different meaning of today. Because you see, the first, the second, third century, quote-unquote, Christians, they did not celebrate satanic pagan holidays called Christmas Easter and Sunday from the first century up until this 21st century we have had something take place that is not even mentioned in scripture so today when you mention the word Christian the first people think about not only Jesus but they think about Christmas Easter and Sunday which I challenge you to open up this Bible from Genesis to Revelation and see if you can find any rules, guidelines, laws, statutes, or commandments given by any of the apostles telling you, instructing you to celebrate Christmas, Easter, or Sunday. That's the three main tenets of today's Western modernized Christianity. That is what Pastor Dow is opposing because that faith or that belief is not written about in this book. The apostle Saul came up on the scene and he gave us a warning. He said, if any man come and preach to you another message or another good news or what is commonly referred to today as another gospel, he said, let them be a curse. That's what he said. And that's what I'm trying to tell all you that we've been hoodwinked, deceived, um, bamboozled, run amok by the seminaries 
cemeteries, seminaries, the theologians, uh, all your pastors and preachers and teachers who go to these schools to learn all this knowledge, and they do not tell you the truth of all this. So we are over here in Acts chapter 11, verse 26, and it says, And when they had found him, they brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass a whole year they assembled themselves together with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. Now, notice, and the disciples, the pupils, the word disciples means someone that is a pupil, a student, and someone that is learning. So someone else gave them the designation of the word Christian in Antioch. And the people who gave them this designation just so to be the same people that had them in captivity at the time, which was Romans, or the scribes and Pharisees that dissented and opposed the Messiah, Yahshua HaMashiach, or Jesus the Christ. So that's the first place we see the word Christians in a plural form, meaning more than one mention. Then we go over to Acts. Uh, I believe it's Acts chapter 26. Let me go to Acts chapter 26 and let's go to verse 28. Here is the apostle Paul who was already on the scene and he's getting ready to be judged by Agrippa. And Agrippa turns around and says, you know what? He says over in verse 28, then Agrippa said unto Paul or the apostle Saul, he said, almost thou or you Persuade us me to be a Christian. Now think about this. I have to show you what Paul said about himself in order for you to comprehend and understand what the Bible is saying. Remember, over in Exodus, the third chapter, the Most High Yah is the God of the Hebrews. The God of the Hebrews. Uh, matter of fact, let's go over there real quick. It's called Shemot. Shemot, the third chapter. And matter of fact, I tell you what you do. If you would just take the time and read the whole entire third chapter, you, you'll be more informed because it, it's sitting right here. I'm the God of the Hebrews. If I if I tell you every single verse, and I'm planning on to do that even more so for clarity. You simply are just not going to believe unless you pick up this Bible and start reading for yourself, okay? Unless you start reading for yourself, all right? But please read that. But let's go over to Paul's own words himself. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And let's go to verse uh, 22. But I still want you to read all of Exodus chapter 3. So 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, verse 22. This is Paul writing to the assembly in Asia Minor called Corinth. And Paul says this. This is what he said. Now, mind you, remind you, we just read over in Acts 26, 28, where Agrippa said, Paul, who claims to be a Hebrew and an Israelite. Did y'all hear what I said? Who claims to be a Hebrew and Israelite. But the translation is telling us that you almost persuade me to be a Christian. Now, wait a minute. To be a Hebrew and an Israelite is something totally different than Western Christian Christianization or Christian of the way we comprehend and understand it today. Because the word Christian back then means someone that is a follower of Christ. Today, people use the term Christian, but they don't follow Christ because Jesus said in John 14, 15, that if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And so the only way we can demonstrate that we love him is we have to actually keep his commandment. At the end of the book of Hazun, it's called Revelation chapter 22. I want you to read it. He says, blessed are they 
that do his commandments, that they will have a right to the tree of life and they will enter into the gates into the city. I want you to read that. More homework. All right. I'm going to give you some verses for clarity for time. Other ones, you're going to have to do your own due diligence because that's the only way. Because, you know, I can say anything. I can assert anything like any other person that gets on YouTube or any other platform and just tell you anything. But I realized that, and that's the reason why I keep giving you references. You're going to have to read this because, and believe this for yourself because we're literal as a people. All right. So Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22, he says, Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Paul never called himself a Christian. He was called a Christian. Uh, he had his designation put upon him by the very people who was persecuting him and enslaved him and ultimately ended up martyring him as a witness. And the word witness means martyr. All right. So he goes on, Paul. Now he's, we, we're leaving Corinth. We're going to Rome. And over in Rome, Romans, the 11th chapter. All right. And of course, in your Bible, you have Rome that or Romans that come before Corinthians. But over in Romans 11 chapter, let's see if we can believe the words that Paul said himself. Or what he was. <clears throat> because we have the Romans and we have modern trans liators levying charges and names and designations against the Apostle Paul and the rest of the apostles that they never took upon themselves. So, Paul said in Romans chapter 11, starting the first verse, I say then, have God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite. So why did Paul not call himself a Christian? And what has happened since then in these translations to where the religion of Christianity has hijacked and taken over the faith of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who were Hebrews, Abraham, Isaac, Hebrew, Jacob, Hebrew, Israelite, Moses, Hebrew, Israelite, David, Hebrew, Israelite, Jesus, Hebrew, Israelite. So how all of a sudden this religion, especially with this Western spin, to where we come up with all these traditions of men and all these holidays rather than holy days, rather than festivals, we come up with all these different types of celebrations, Christmas, Easter, and Sunday. It's not even instructed in this book. How did it become the largest religion in the world unless the devil himself said, we can't beat them, so we join them. Outburst the Roman Catholic Church, which has influenced all of the flavors or the daughters of Rome, which are Christians. Baptists, Methodists, Catholics, Apostolic, Presbyterians, um, Anglicans, uh, Pentecostals, uh, Seventh-day Adventists, Mormons, uh, any all these flavors you come up with, churches of Christ, they're all of daughters of the woman that is mentioned about in the book of Revelations. You need to go read about her. Anyway, I think I was in my Bible turned over here. I need to turn back to Romans 11 chapter. So here's the second occasion that we see that Paul is actually witnessing of his own self that he's a Hebrew and he's an Israelite. Here in, in Romans chapter 11, he says, I am also an Israelite of the seed of Abraham and of the tribe of Benjamin. All right, y'all get that, right? So we have visited two places where Agrippa, a Roman, actually said, you almost persuade me to be a disciple of Christ or a Christian. Then we, we had went to the first one, that said in Antioch, and the disciples were first called Christians at Antioch in Acts chapter 11. But never have we ever, ever saw an Israelite said that they were Christians. Key point. The Christianity or what was considered Christians back then is a total different 
thing that is presented to us today. Uh, the Christianity of today is something that comes right out of the pit of hell that is satanic to the core. Because this Christianity of today, this religion does not believe that you have to be obedient to the word of Yah. They think that grace will save them from everything. But that ain't what the word says. So, But I, before I don't want to digress, let me say concretely on the point. All right. So now we go to, um, uh, where we at now? Let's go to um, Philippians. Philippians chapter 3, verse 5. Let's see what Paul continually keeps saying. He's already been in Corinth. He's been to Rome. And now we're going to go to Philippians chapter 3, verse 5. Paul says this. And remember to always, in order to be concretely, to read in context. And that means to read before and after because um, you can it's easy you can translate or you can translate and I'm not going to get into all that right now just look up the word okay but over in Philippians chapter 3 verse 5 Paul says circumcise the eighth day of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin and Hebrew of the Hebrews as touching the law of Pharisee. So, Paul, on three different occasions in three different venues, admit that he was a Hebrew and an Israelite. Yet today, the Christians want to try to take him and make him their champion of their fake, false, phony religion because you're not going to find Paul giving you instructions for Christmas, Easter, Sunday. It's just not there. I, I challenge you to read this for your own soul's sake. So anyway, now we have a spin that's go on. We're going to go over here to 1 Peter. All right? We're going to go to 1 Peter. All right? Because remember, Peter, Paul had already claimed that he was the apostle to the Gentiles or the Goyans or the foreigners, the aliens or the strangers. Peter was the apostle to the Yehudim or the Judas or Judites. All right. In first Peter chapter four, we got something that is going on here. All right. Now, mind you, Peter walked with Yahshua, Jesus, talked with him, slept with him, and is of the seed of Abraham of the stock of Israel. He's a Hebrew. But the translation tells us this in, in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 16. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify Yah on his behalf. Now, listen to me. I'm telling you right now, even if you go and look at the history of the first century, when Peter, James, John, or Peter and Jacobo and John, or Peter and Jacob and John, and Paul was up on the scene. They knew nothing about these designations that is written in our modern day translations of this Bible called Christians. They knew nothing about it. Um, why would Peter who knew the Hebrew Messiah, the same one that said he has not been sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Why would he all of a sudden change his perspective and point of view to say if any man suffers a Christian? Again, when you look up the word Christian, it says if any man suffer as a follower of Christ, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify you on his behalf. So Peter did not never say, he never said, if any man suffer as a Christian, because if anything, he's a Hebrew, he's an Israelite. Uh, if you read Romans chapter 9 and chapter 11, you'll see to the Israelites pertain to the adoptions, the law, the covenants, every bit of it. Uh, and Yah hasn't rejected his people, like many people practice this replacement theology of today. But are you beginning to comprehend and understand what I'm saying? Even after the death of the disciples, 
or the apostles who followed Christ. If the word Christian came into being, which apparently it did, it is definitely not speaking about the Western modernized Christian or Christianity that we see today. These people did not put Christmas trees up in their house. They didn't celebrate a Santa Claus or reindeers flying in these fairy tales across skies or rabbits laying eggs. Uh, they, they knew nothing of these type of celebrations. Uh, they knew nothing about Sunday worship. You can read Acts chapter 2 verse 17, Acts chapter 8 or verse uh, Acts chapter 18 verse 4. You can read Acts chapter 13 verse 42 through 44. You will see even after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, Yahshua Mashiach, that they kept the Sabbath. They kept the Shabbat. Um, we have had Satan, the devil himself, says that if he can't beat them, join them. That's what happened in Constantine's day because Constantine was a sun worshiper. He was a worshiper of Saul Invictus. And he stopped persecuting the Christians back then, which is a total different Christian of today. Because the Christians back then, if they had that designation, they was keeping the commandments of Jesus Christ. Today, they don't keep the commandments. This is two total different people. Don't get mixed up and don't get deceived just because people mention words to you and they all have similarities. That doesn't mean they're the same belief. But the people then were totally different than the people of today. You know what? I, I can go on and on and on. I'm already longer in this video than I intended to be. I'm a quickly approaching 42 minutes but I thought I would take this time out here since there's a bunch of brand new people that are listening here tonight and maybe you can comprehend and listen to what I'm saying you know what's ironic though at the end of the book it doesn't say that all Christians are going to be saved it says in all Israel shall be saved that means if you want to be grafted in um, to this particular root and not another vine that you're going to have to become an Israelite nothing in here mentioned about Christianity oh pastor but I see it right there I can show you a lot of things that in the English version of translation that it does not give you the concrete of the original Abrin or the Hebrew or the Greek it does it just simply doesn't do it when you start looking behind the words that is presented to you in English and you start seeing what the real true meaning was, you start to do like I did. You got upset, so you become a student of this word for yourself because if you can't trust nobody else, at least you can trust yourself. So way before the advent of the internet, I would go to libraries, I would read encyclopedias, I would study commentaries, I would study this word, mostly the Bible, I, I got a hold of a good Greek lexicon, a Hebrew lexicon, and I will study and look at these words and I end up coming to the truth. I hope that Yahshua HaMashiach has opened your understanding in this presentation and I hope that each and every last one of you, um, for the little short time we have allotted to us here on this earth, will receive the words that this preacher has said to you, the Bible says in the book of Romans that faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of Yah and how can he hear without a preacher and how can he preach except he been sent. I have been sent to preach to you the truth of the everlasting gospel. Yah had promised the prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah 3.15 he said, and I will give you pastors, shepherds, according to my heart which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Now, you know, the Bible says in Hosea 4, 6 that y'all's people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And the reason why they are destroyed is because they reject knowledge. Um, and of course, 1 Thessalonians 5, 21 says, prove all things and to hold fast to that which is good. That means test everything. When we were born, all of us in this generation, the previous generation and generation has come in, um, I mean, in the generation before us, generation after us, 
Uh, we were all born into this world, and we assumed um, that the order that is in place was truthful. Um, we have went to their schooling. We went to their churches. Um, we've learned their religions. Uh, and, of course, uh, with you know the Bible being the best-selling book uh, on the earth, you would figure that, um, that people would read it just to see if what's being said is so rather than accepting the norm. Um, Galatians 4.16 says, Have I become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. And that's the one thing I painfully learned in the, uh, you know, throughout my walk in this life right here, that yes, you do become people's enemies when you tell the truth. Neither here nor say. I'm here because the question comes to me continually. Um, and the reason being is because there's a lot of brand new people, uh, not only in the ministry, but people coming out of the churches, which I highly recommend, come out of all of Christian churches. Now, before um, you have some type of visceral attitude towards me or you go off an emotional roller coaster, or whatever, hear me out for a second. Listen to what I'm saying and then test what I'm saying. And then and only then when you do that, you're going to find out. Uh, that more than likely, pro you know, Pastor Dow has been the best friend you ever had because I loved you enough to tell you the truth. All right, so we're going to deal with the religion of Christianity. And, of course, you know the religion of Christianity, what it, what it does. Let me move this over here. It uses, what does it do? The Bible, don't it? Don't it use the Bible? All right. Well, inside this Bible right here, inside this Bible right here, uh, it contains truth. Now, uh, you're going to have to do a lot of research. You're going to have to do a lot of individual study, not only just from a word perspective, but from a cultural perspective in order to come to the truth. I'm just going to deal with the basic knowledge of it to at least get your foot in the door so that you can know how to test everyone, yourself, anyone who claims to be posing as a preacher or teacher. Let's just deal with some facts here. Um, number one, this book, this Holy Bible, is not about the religion of Christianity. As a matter of fact, the religion of Christianity is not even mentioned in the whole of this book. There are no instructions. There are no rules. There are no guidelines. There is no laws, no statutes and commandments for Christians or the religion of Christians in this book because this book is the history of the ancient Hebrew Israelites and their descendants of today. That's what this book is all about. And if anyone inserts any other thing, any other um, religion, any other perspective, any other theology, ideology, philosophy, if you start from there and go from there first, you have no problem being able to discerning what this Bible says. You know, Yahshua, Jesus Christ, Said in Matthew 15, verse 24, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So, watch this. Not only is the religion of Christianity not even mentioned in the Bible, Jesus was not a Christian. Paul never professed to be a Christian. As a matter of fact, no one in the Bible ever professed to be a Christian. I know that sounds crazy, but all you have to do is check it out. The word or the acronym Christian appears three times in the Bible, three times. Um, it, it's either referred to um, in the plural form or the singular form. All right. And what we'll do is I'll ask you to get your Bible and we'll go over a few of these passages of scriptures where the word Christian is actually mentioned and we'll test it. Okay. Um, but let's get some facts out of the way first. Okay. Fact number one, Jesus was not a Christian. That's a fact. He was an Israelite. He was a Hebrew. Paul, fact number two, never said he was a Christian. Number three, Peter never said he was a Christian. Number four, who called the Israelites, what is commonly referred to in the Bible as Jews, proper translation, Yehudims, who are the people that referred to the Jews or the Yehudim as Christians? Mm. Did Paul say that you almost persuade me to be a Christian? No, that's a fact. Paul never said that. Um, fact number seven, Jesus 
Yahshua never, ever, ever came to start a new religion, a new way or a new perspective. Nope. There is nothing new under the sun. What Jesus, Yahshua, did was point people to the Father. And he said, if you want to get to him, you got to go through me. All right. Also, let me get another fact. You'll see a man's name in this book because, you know, this is often uh, sometimes called the King James Version. Have you ever went and looked behind the name James presented in the New Testament to see exactly who it is or what that name really is? I think you would probably see the name Jacobo, meaning Jacob. Fact number nine. I can, we got so many facts that they ain't know of, but we got a bunch of them. All right. Over in Acts chapter 12, verses 3 and 4, you know what it says? Um, there's a word in there that appears one time in the whole of the scripture. Now, if we're going to test everything, uh, the Bible teaches us uh, over in Isaiah that line must be upon line, upon line, upon line, and precept upon precept and on precept. Here a little and there a little. Isn't it amazing that the word Easter appears one time in the whole of the entire Bible, and yet it is celebrated ignorantly by a lot of people who profess that they follow Jesus Christ, Yahshua HaMashiach, the Hebrew Elohim, Almighty Yahweh. That's amazing, isn't it? Yet and still, Passover appears 28 times in the New Testament, and these people of this new deceived religion called Christianity don't keep it. As a matter of fact, if you go look behind that word over in Acts chapter 12 and read it in context, verses 3 and 4, where it mentions the word Easter, get your Strong's, a good concordance, get your Bible dictionary and look up that word and see if the word that is presented to us in English is that a proper translation. Well, I did that some time ago. You know what I did? I started studying on my own. It came to a lot of truth, which I would advise you to do. And I found out that that word means Peshka, meaning Passover, meaning Easter is not another name for Passover. So where did all these myths, where did all these fairy tales, where did all these philosophies come from since you cannot find them in the Bible? Well, there's the age of anti-Messiah, anti-Christ. The prophet Daniel said that there would be a religious system that would come and seek to change laws, times, and seasons. We're all but here, 100%. But there's also something else that is transpiring and taking place right before our very eyes. There's a great awakening. Many people are forsaking the pagan gods of Christianity and all these other religions out here, and they're coming to the real true God of the Hebrews, Almighty Yahweh, Elohim himself. And they're coming to him through Yahshua HaMashiach. Now, let's go over here and let's do what the Bible says. Let's prove all things and let's hold fast to that, which is good, okay? Over in um, Acts chapter 11, verse 26, it says, And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. Antioch is the providence of Asia Minor, so he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a, a whole year... They assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. Listen to this. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Now, that's why earlier I proposed the question, who called them Christians? Because it wasn't the Jews. It was not the people who are the Yehudis that called them Christians. No, these were idolatrous, idol-worshiping pagans stone worshipers of statues of wood and stone. These were the people that were referring to the disciples or the believers in Messiah as Christians. So you had pagans calling them Christians. When you look up the word Christians in the plural form that is mentioned there in Acts eleven twenty six, go click on that word. You're going to find out that that word means follower of Christ. Not a religion. Not some other label other than what the people say is in the book. I mean, the Bible tells you in, in the book of Romans clearly that all Israel shall be saved. It says nothing about Christians. But 
People make assertions and they make assumptions and they insert a lot of things. If you stick with the church fathers, the assembly fathers that's in his book, such as Yahshua, Peter, James, we'll go on with that, and John, Paul. You stick with all of them, those are the original. You can believe what they say. Anybody else that's coming after them is pretty suspect because their words is etched in here and been in here for a long time. And of course, the ancient church fathers are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So I submit to you, when someone says that they are a Calvinist, who is he and what is he? And what authority does he have? Because John Calvin is not written in this book. And John Wesley is neither written in here either. But I do know this, they do come with another doctrine. They come with another teaching other than what's written in this book. And of course, if they do that, you let them be a curse. That's what you do. Now, that was scripture number one that we can use, or let's say a text number one that we can use that you see Christians in that mention. Now, notice the disciples are not calling themselves Christians, but a pagan people, a Gentile people, are the ones who are calling the Yehudim or the Jews Christians. Uh -huh. Now, think about that for a second. Let's go down here to Acts chapter 26, verse 28. It says, then Agrippa said unto Paul, now Agrippa was a ruler in Rome, okay? Agrippa said this, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Now, did Paul persuade him to be a Christian or was Paul persuading him to be a follower of Christ? So what Agrippa was saying, Paul, you almost persuaded me to be a follower of of Christ or the follower of your Messiah which will be proper translation he did there was Paul didn't make no new religion out of it Paul was the Hebrew of the Hebrews that's right circumcised the eighth day can you believe it let's go to one more the only other place that this word Christian is mentioned now mind you Peter was a true Hebrew and a true Israelite we got to ask ourselves a question. If you are a true Hebrew and a true Israelite, at this time in this book right here, would you call yourself a Christian? No, 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 no. No, you wouldn't. That's why you have to understand translation. 1 Peter 4, 16 said, If any man suffer as a Christian, would Paul say that? Or would he say, If any man suffer as a follower of Messiah, or what the Strongs would say, a follower of Christ, let him not be ashamed. But let him glorify God on this behalf. So you see, nowhere is the religion of Christianity even mentioned. I submit to you that it is the religion that actually teaches people to break the commandments of God. Not only break the commandments, but they exalt deities. They exalt pagan satanic forms of worship that hide behind uh, the modern names of Christmas, which is nothing more than Mithra worship. And they may try to dis distance themselves, but the history is stifling. It really is. The acid test is, can you find Christmas in the Bible? Did the early assembly, well, I mean early assembly, I define the people who were there after the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. That was the early assembly. I believe that their testimony is true and their record is true and we can believe their testimony to be true and let every other man be a liar. So you can read all the New Testament. You will see no instructions for Christmas. You'll hear a bunch of fairy tales laced with the story of baby Jesus and about three wise men which I don't know who told you it was three, but they, that's what they assert. They say it is. You can hear all these fairy tales. Now, the book teaches us that no lies of the truth and no truth is of a lie. And whoever is a liar is of their father, the devil, the father of lies. And that's what the book says. And so there are a lot of people playing and juggling concepts and theories, philosophies, ideas, theologies, and, and, and everything else, toying around playing around with the people's minds because they go to these theological seminary schools and they get puffed up with all this Roman Catholic knowledge 
and then the knowledge of these um, people who have also, like Daniel had warned us about, uh, the people who change laws, times, and seasons, they change the seven-day Sabbath to the first day Sunday or the day of the sun or sun worshipers. It's utter market and amazing. You're not going to find it. Nowhere in there. You're just simply not going to do it. Before I ramble on too far, let's go and find out who Paul himself said he was. Because there are many people that are um, putting words into Paul's mouth and saying that Paul said he was a Christian or Paul is the author of Christianity. Let's see what Paul says. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 21 says, I speak as concerning reproach, as though we have been weak, how be it wherein soever any is bold, I speak foolishly. I am bold also. Verse 22 in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Paul says, are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they of the seed of Abraham? So am I. Paul just got finished laying out not only his genealogy, his pedigree, he clearly told us what he was, who he was, and what seed he actually came from. Now, where do people get off calling Paul a Christian? I do not understand. Because again, I'm giving you a chance and opportunity to look through all the pages of this book to see if you can find the religion of Christianity in here. You're not going to do it. You just simply ain't going to do it. And if it's not in there, then um, I think somebody has deceived you, your family, and the masses of the people. And I think the father for this great awakening is taking place is because people are fleeing lies, theories, fairy tales. See, Pastor Dow is not the institution, nor are we the assembly or the ministry that has reared you in fairy tales. I never told you um, that a fat man is going to go all across this earth in one night and give you presents. I never, ever, ever taught you that a rabbit is, is going to lay eggs and we're going to associate the fertility um, goddess with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I never, I never reared you in those fairy tales. I never, ever instructed and told you that the Sabbath has been repealed and done away with, even though you can't find it nowhere in here, and that it was replaced for the first day sun god worship. I never told you that. And what we should be doing is instead of getting mad at me because of my boldness, like Paul spoke in 1 Corinthians 11, 21, I'm bold also as well. Uh, especially concerning the truth and getting the truth out to you. Because I realize that unless somebody gets out here and say it, because faith comes out hearing, and hearing comes by the word of Yah, and you can really truly can't hear without a preacher, unless somebody gets out here and say it and speak truth in your mind, and then let the Ruach or the Holy Spirit do what he was designed to do, do what he was created to do, do what he was there to do, because he's always been there, excuse me, do what he was there to do, which is influence your heart and mind, providing that you are ordained to eternal life, because if you don't have ears to hear, it's none of my business, I can't give you the ears to hear. This is only for those who are ordained to eternal life. And if you are ordained to eternal life, you have to renounce and forsake the false religion of Christianity, which this Bible has no rules, no instructions, no guidelines for at all. And you would have to come to the real true Messiah. You have to really come to the real true Yahweh Elohim and not the God of Christianity. And that's just the truth. Because see, the God of Christianity says that, that the Sabbath is now Sunday. It changed from the seventh day to the first day. But that ain't what the Bible says. Also, Christianity says that we should celebrate holidays in place of holy days. But that ain't what the book says. But let's go on. Paul goes on to finish saying in 2 Corinthians eleven twenty three, 23, Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors more abundantly. Now, you know, it's amazing because Paul could talk like that. But when I start talking like that, people try to say it's arrogant and pride. But let me, let me just follow the same sentiment as Paul, though, okay? Paul said, are they ministers of Christ? So I'm going to say the same thing. If anybody out there fancies themselves to be a minister of Christ, then I speak as a fool. But if you claim to be a minister of Christ, 
I want you to find another pastor out there more of a minister of Christ than I am, more of a minister of Messiah than I am. Because in labors, I more abundantly outdo, out physically work, and I've outbuilt every single person out there that I know of, and I don't know everybody, that claims to be some type of minister. I've done ran circles around them all over the place concerning building communities and homes for Israelites, being able to make sure that we take care of the widows, to make sure that our children are brought up in the ways and the admonition of the Most High Yahweh. That's right. And we have nine viable communities where people scattered throughout the United States of America and some parts of the world where they do not even have to go out here and associate themselves if they choose not to with the people of this world and they can live their lives in quiet and peace. I know most people would disrespect us. I keep continually saying community, but they continue to say commune, thereby showing disrespect. And when people disrespect, I have no honor for them. I have no quarter for enemies. But we have communities. And the word community means common unity. Right now we're sitting on 50 acres of land where I'm at right here. And there are about 35 Israelites that live on this land. We live a quiet and peaceable life. We grow our own food. We have our own tabernacle sitting at the top of the hill that we meet at. We eat twice a day in the dining hall. Um, we raise our own cattle. Uh, we have our own little farm. And we have many other locations that are doing the same thing, people that are getting free, who the Most High is waking up. Now, if you go over to the book of Acts, the second chapter, it would tell you that believers had all things common. If you go over to Acts chapter 4, you'll be able to see that there were people, that's the blueprint, who sold their possessions, all their proceeds, and they laid it at the apostles' feet, and when the apostles' feet received the monies, they made distribution to every man as he had needed. In other words, guess what? The early assembly lived in communities, commonly called tribes. What are these people doing today? See, just like Paul boasted that he said, he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, more abundantly, in stripes above measure, in prisons, more frequencies, in deaths off. Now, I got people making death threats. I have people that try to uh, get on YouTube and, and bear false witness because they're not true witnesses. A true witness is someone who has an eyewitness account who has actually been there, seen it, and done it. These people are false witnesses. So we've got to be able to tell the gamesmanship of the devil, especially when people are breaking commandments. Let's go to the next one and see exactly what Paul said. Philippians chapter 3, verse 4, and let's close this thing up here with a few more of the scriptures, okay? Paul said of himself in Philippians chapter 3, verse 4, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man think of that he hath whereof, he might trust in the flesh, Paul said, I the more. So all you people out there, you, you know, you, you're arrogant in your speech, you're arrogant in your disposition, uh, you point fingers and levy charges, but you don't even live a tenth of what straightway lives. Straightway inspires people to get out of debt, to get free, so they can learn how to be free, so they can serve their yah in peace. Our children are homeschooled. Can I ask somebody out there, anybody out there, what's wrong with that? Because when we see the decadence of this world, when we see the spiritual bankruptcy and the moral decay that is happening in this society, do you really truly, if you are a Yah-fearing man or woman, really truly a commandment keeper, do you really truly want your children to have the influence of being reared by these people in this world? Have you seen the school teachers in this earth? You don't know if, if they have chosen an alternative lifestyle and they're going to try to impart that value system in your children. You don't know if they're witches or warlocks. You don't know what they're doing. But the Bible teaches you train up in the child the way it should go. So I cannot see anything is wrong with this, but let me go on, all right? So Paul said, you trust in the flesh, he said, I don't more. All right? Paul said, he look at this in verse 5 of Philippians chapter 3. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel. 
of the tribe of Benjamin and Hebrew of the Hebrews as touching the law of Pharisee. I had a meeting in Green Bay some time ago and a man stood up in the meeting. He came late. He wasn't there to hear the introduction, but he came late and he immediately jumped belligerent and got mad, loud speaking, just totally out of control. Lost, if he had the Holy Spirit, just lost all self-control. And I made one statement. And the statement I made that teed him off was, is that Paul was not a Christian. Ooh, we did he get fired up? Did he get fired up? Got kind of heated in there too. And we'll just leave it at that. Well, I just told him to sit down and listen for a little bit. And the same scriptures that I'm reading you right now is the same ones I read him. You know what he did? He just got up and left. Why not just humble yourself under the mighty hand of Yah and accept the truth and then walk in the newness of life? We done been through two places right now where Paul never, ever, ever disowned his Hebrew heritage or his culture. Never. Clearly told us what he was. You're not going to find one place in the whole of this Bible where Paul said he was a Christian and neither will you find one place in this Bible that it gives you any rules, instructions, or guidelines to the religion of Christianity. There, there's, there's, there's not a Christianity in this Bible. Holy Bible is not there. So what's going on? What's happening? I submit to you that someone has lied to you, that people have been deceiving you, and they have done a very good job of doing it too. I think it's time for you to obey the book that says, Come out of her, my people. And come out from among them. It also says, and be ye separate. Now, if you're going to come out, be ye separate, where, where are the Christians obeying that command? Said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a God to you, and you will be my people. That's what the book says. Where is this action that's put the words? Oh, that's right. Christianity says, uh, you can't work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Christianity says uh, it's not by works. It's only by faith, mental assent. Well, the book equates works showing your faith. As a matter of fact, one of the apostles says, if you show me your faith without works, I will show you my faith by my works. Go check these things out, okay? Let's go one more, okay? Let's go one more. Romans chapter 11, verse 1. I say then, have God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. When you hear Paul continue to keep referring to Abraham, he's telling you he was a Hebrew. Clearly. Because Abraham was a Hebrew. Abraham was not an Israelite. He was a Hebrew. The word or the name Israel did not come into being until uh, the Most High Yah changed Jacob's name from Jacob to Israel. And out of Jacob and the four women that he had, Jacob was a polygynist, or he was in polygyny, come the 12 tribes of Israel. And Paul continues to keep referring back to his genealogy. I hope I said something to be able to stimulate thought. I hope that you would consider... I hope that you would pause this video, take your time, get your Bible out, go and test everything that I said. Research the claims that I made here. See if I made actual, factual claims, or did I make assertions like Christians do? Christians make a lot of assertions, but can't prove it. So, I've told you the truth, and that's why I said... And in quoted Galatians 4.16, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Because if I've told you the truth, and I have told you the truth, that means there are some repentance, there's, some rec there's a reckoning that has to be done in order to be brought back to the real Jesus Christ, the real Yahshua Hamashiach. My suggestion is repent and turn from your wicked ways, renounce idolatry, renounce the commandments breaking and especially the breaking of the Sabbath and bearing false witness, renounce idolatry and worshiping other gods, Christmas and Easter, repent for that 
and come to the true Messiah of Israel. Come to the God of Israel, Almighty Yahweh himself. And in that, when you do, you'll find rest. And you'll find rest for your soul. I'll leave some information down below if you'd like to contact us. Until then, I'll see y'all a little while later. I hope y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day. May the peace of Yah rule in your hearts is my prayer. Have a good day, YouTube.